Well, warm welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday the 30th of August. Now, yesterday we saw President Biden announcing a huge new vaccine rollout or is going to attempt a huge new vaccine rollout for everyone over the age of six months in the United States. And today we see a similar level of panic from the UK government. Now, this is over the so-called Priola variant, the B286. Now, we do note that Priola, for some bizarre reason, is named after an asteroid that hangs out near Jupiter. And this asteroid, as I understand her, cosmology or solar systemology or whatever it is, has zero probability of colliding with Earth. Now, the, 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 the risk from BA286 is probably a little higher, but maybe not a lot. That's what this is about. Incredible panic from the UK government that brought forward the whole winter vaccination programme, which is questionable in the first place, by a month. And they're going to start it on the 11th of September. Just incredible, because by, by the time January, February, March comes along, any immunity, such as it would be from coronavirus or vaccines, is going to be dramatically reduced anyway by, by the time you get into February, March. Very bizarre a decision from the UK government, I would have thought. We can't disagree with it, of course, um, but uh, let's report on it now. So this is the um, World Health Organization have said it's a variant under monitoring at the moment. So it's not a variant of concern. Now, we do notice that this is BA. This is a derivative of the, of the BA Omicron, Omicron type variant. This is not something radically new. It is not a new letter. It's not a variant of concern. It's just a derivative of the BA2 type Omicron. And as far as we know, um, we don't have any evidence at all that it's going to cause more severe disease. Now, I'm just going to read you out a list at the moment. Um, I'll just show you it here. The, the, these are the, um, the current uh, symptoms that we're getting from uh, Omicron. Uh, now, these are the, um, this is still based on the Zoe uh, data. Um, Professor Tim Spector and his team. Um, it's not based on as many numbers as it were was, obviously, but it's still a substantial uh, cohort and it's still the best we've got. So 63.41% um, of people that get infection now get a sore throat. 59.18% uh, get a runny nose. Headache, blocked nose, sneezing, cough, hoarse voice, coughing up a bit of phlegm. These are all just classic common cold features that we live with all our lives and we'll carry on living with them afraid for the rest of our lives unless some dramatic treatment for the common cold comes along uh, muscle pains a bit achy sure fatigue yeah swollen neck glands altered smell dizzy lightheadedness sore eyes earache uh, that should be 14.4 loss of smell um, very few get a fever joint, shoulder pain, chest pain, tightness, shortness of breath. So by far and away, the most common features here are those of the common cold. And many people, of course, who are admitted to hospital, for example, with infection are, are just that, with infection, not because of the infection. But let's carry on and look at the way the British government has reacted. Now, this is from the UK Health Security Agency. I always think that's such an, an Orwellian term, health security agency. It's a bit like a democratic republic. If you've got to say it, it probably isn't true. Anyway, this was first monitored on the 14th of August with the horizon scanning, which is fine. That's good. Um, now, 34 amino acids are different compared to BA2. They're all in the spike protein. And it's actually 36 amino acid changes compared to the, um, the current, the most common uh, variant circulating in 2023. 20, now this is, to be fair, a big difference. Immunologically this is a big difference and there will be degrees, high degrees as we've seen, of, of immune escape. I think that's inevitably going to happen. Of course we don't know how transmissible this is going to be yet. There's no evidence that it's going to be more transmissible than any other variant. And the fact that there's so many changes to the spike protein might mean it might not fit into the ACE2 receptor and may actually not infect cells very well at all. We don't know that yet. But despite this, UK government is panicking away and has announced these dramatic uh, acceleration to the vaccination uh, programmes. 
And uh, of course, in recent videos, we've looked at all the complications that go with vaccine, the high rate of uh, adverse reactions. We've looked at, of course, we're not saying there's any conflict of interest here, but we've looked at the revolving door phenomena and all sorts of things. And yet they want to bring this vaccination program forward. Let's carry on sticking to the facts. Um, now, the, the number of genetic mute, uh, genetic differences is roughly the same magnitude as in be between the initial Omicron and the previous variant, such as Delta. And of course, Omicron did uh, sweep the world. Um, we could say, or well, we do say, uh, I would say thankfully, because it got rid of Delta. Delta was making people sick. Omicron, as we've seen, mostly the common cold type features. And most people, the vast majority of people, much less serious infection. But it's a big difference. But of course, Omicron uh, was highly transmissible. So there's a big genetic change and it was highly transmissible. Here there's a big genetic change. So we're going to get the immune escape. But as we've said, it may not be transmissible. So this whole thing could be a complete damp squid. Um, we don't know yet, but it, it, could, it could well be. But even if it's not, it's just another Omicron. And these are the clinical features of Omicron, the common cold type features. Um, very strange the way the UK government has reacted. Um, declared a variant on the 18th of August, so pretty new. A week beginning the 28th of August, um, UK government has uh, identified uh, two cases. I think uh, Denmark, Israel, United States, South Africa. I think that all comes up to nine that have been uh, identified around the world. Now, this is what the UK government's panic reaction is based on. To be fair, um, these cases appear to be unrelated, so it's probably been spreading for months, um, indicating it spreads to some degree. Uh, but as far as we know, it's still a very, very much minority variant. And yet here we have it here, UK government, this is their announcement, flu and COVID or team vac vaccination programmes to be brought forward. That's what is on the government sites. This is their press release. They describe this as a precautionary measure taken to protect those most vulnerable from illness during the winter following the identification of COVID-19 variant BA286. Um, that's following the two identified cases in the United Kingdom. All this is based on speculation, as far as I can see, that because it's found in different countries, it's already spread. Therefore, it's probably been around for a while because it's in different countries. Unrelated cases may be transmissible, may be highly transmissible, but we simply don't know that yet. So based on essentially no information at all, they've changed the entire national strategy. Um, to bring out the vaccinations earlier. 11th of September, due to start. UK Health Security Agency suggests speeding up uh, autumn vaccine will deliver greater protection. As far as I can see, I'm not quite sure what evidence that is based on, because as we know, immunity will wane remarkably. Any immunity that it does give will wane remarkably quickly, and any reduction in transmission will be completely negligible. On their website, nothing about getting out in the fresh air, nothing about taking exercise, nothing about taking vitamin D, nothing about taking zinc, nothing about getting plenty of sleep, nothing about all the other things to do with nutrition we know can optimise the immune system. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to, not, 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 not optimising immune health in any way, just get vaccinated. The panacea that happens to be remarkably expensive and helps... A lot of pe some people, no, I was going to say a lot of people, but a few people make a lot of money. Not that that's their consideration at all, of course. Right, supporting those at greatest risk of severe illness and reducing the potential impact on the NHS, really? By February, will this have any difference whatsoever? Will it actually have reduced immunity by February? We simply don't know. And yet, this panic measure... People in older care homes uh, are going to get vaccinated. Again, nothing, no, no mention about vitamin D, the fact that they don't get out in the sun much and they'll all be very low on vitamin D. Simply not mentioned. Clinically vulnerable, those over 65. Health and social care staff and carers. Now, of course, these are actually probably what I'm most worried about. These people are, of course, working age. Therefore, at much greater risk 
of the significant long list of adverse reactions from messenger ribonucleic acid vaccines that we know about. And given that these people are not, that the vaccine is not going to significantly in any way reduce the ability of these people to transmit, transmit the virus further on, why are they being prioritised? Why would you take the risk of vaccinating young people against the known uh, risk? No mention of risk-benefit analysis on the government website. Can't say they're wrong, um, but we can point out that they don't mention uh, risk-benefit analysis on their websites that we've looked at so far. Chief Executive of the UK Health Security Agency. Everyone's a day more a night these days. Um for services during the pandemic. I actually thought we made a bit of a botch up of the pandemic, but hey-ho, she's got a dame hood for it. Um, might be wrong, of course. Maybe she did brilliantly in the, the pandemic. As we continue to live with COVID-19, we expect to see new variants emerge, obviously. <laughs> obviously, of course. Why are we worrying when this is obviously going to happen? Thanks to this, again, this is Dame Jenny Harris, herself a doctor. Thanks to the success of our vaccination programme, we've built a strong broad-based immune defence against new variants throughout the population. Right. It's because of the vaccination programme that this has been successful. Now, nearly all the changes in this virus, in, in this new uh, variant, are in the spike protein. It's the spike protein that has dramatically changed. And yet the vaccines only give immunity against the spike protein. So how can she possibly say that the vaccines from the old variants are protecting against the new variant? This is absolute immunological nonsense as far as I can see. Whereas natural immunity will give you antibodies and immune sensitised immune cells like cytotoxic T cells against nucleocapsid protein, RNA themselves, envelope protein, membrane protein, all the other components of the virus. So to say that the to say that what we have now um, our immune defence against new variants through the population is, is due to the vaccination program is wrong, in my view, because the spike protein that the vaccine works against is so radically different. Whereas all the other components of the virus, natural immunity will give us protection against the new form of the virus because it's the spike protein that's changed in the new form of the virus. So let's be clear, we can expect massive, uh, that's the RNA in the middle, we can ex from all these other components of the virus, we can expect significant cross-immunity from this new variant because the changes are just in the spike protein. A little more objectivity from the American Medical Association from here. They say... Uh, a variant that's adapted evading immunity would not necessarily take off in a population if it doesn't spread efficiently. Uh, now, this is patently true because the inherent transmissibility, to put it more concisely, is completely unknown. I suspect it's going to be way less transmissible than the previous strains because it's got so many different changes. In other words, this spike protein is going to be a different shape. It'll have different amino acids at different places in the spike protein, completely changing the molecular architecture of the spike protein, potentially making it much harder to fit into the ACE2 receptor site. But we don't know that yet. We don't know that. Anyway, um, British Medical Journal... Transmissibility and severity unknown. Direct quote from the British Medical Journal. Little is yet known about the transmissibility of BA286 or whether it may cause more severe disease. No indication at all that it would cause more severe disease. It's the SARS coronavirus too and we have a lot of cross immunity. The British Medical Journal, uh, but scientists do not expect it to be much different from the previous Omicron strains currently in circulation. I agree. So why all the panic? Very strange reaction. So uh, President Biden asked Congress for another $1.4 billion to vaccinate everyone in the United States over the age of six months. Uh, the 
panic in the UK, you could argue, is probably a little less because we're only uh, wanting to vaccinate the uh, those more at risk and more concerningly healthcare workers. Uh, but yet, a panic based on essentially no information at all. Strange but true. Thank you for watching.